Hi, this next project is going to be an SBC 188 single board computer. Uh, this came about because a fellow retro brew user, uh, Robert, I believe from Thailand, uh, sent me this board uh, so I could build it and make a video. Um, so I told him I'd do that and here it is. Very nice compact board, lots of components on it. So this is going to have an 80 uh, C188 CPU with integrated peripherals. It also looks like it has a 16550 UART, an 8255 uh, parallel interface, SRAM, um, an EEPROM or a flash or something, uh, floppy controller. So let's uh, let's build this thing. Um, it looks like most of the work on this is going to be mounting uh, and soldering CPU sockets. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of these sockets put on the board. Okay, all the sockets are mounted. Um, you might notice things look a little bit weird over here with these 20 pin ones. Uh, that's because I was out of 20 pin sockets, so I hacked up some 16 pin and then cut up another 16 pin and stuck them together uh, to make them into 20s. Next task, I think, just you know, following build up from shortest components to taller, is going to be to put in these uh, resistor packs. There's two of them. Uh, the one is a 150 ohm that goes over here, and the other one is a 2.2K that goes over here. Um, I don't have any 2.2K, so I'm going to try putting a 4.7K in there, see what happens. Those uh, are actually pull ups attached to this connector, which I'm not planning on populating anyway. Uh, so I think the 4.7K will work fine there. If not, I'll order a 2.2K and we'll find out. So let me get these two soldered in. Okay, so the two resistor packs, this one and this one, are installed. Uh, you might notice this one comes uh, one pin short. Um, that's just fine. I substituted what I had on hand. And if you look at the schematic, that last pin on the footprint is not hooked up to anything. So that'll be just fine. Okay, every monolithic ceramic capacitor has been soldered in. Uh, they are almost all um, bypass capacitors. A few one microfarads up here, probably for an RS-232 driver. Uh, next up, I'm going to do the resistors and the uh, couple of electrolytic capacitors that go on this. Okay, so here's the board with all of the soldering uh, pretty much complete. Um, what's left to do next is to install all of the ICs, populate the jumpers, uh, hook up power, hook up a serial port, and try it out. I've got myself a chart that I printed out. The Retro Brew Forum says what IC goes in every spot, so let me dig out all those ICs and get it done. Okay, I've got everything connected and ready to try out. So over here is the SBC-188. Um, here is a three and a half inch floppy drive. I've uh, made a little power harness uh, that takes a barrel jack, hooks it up to the SBC-188, and hooks it up to the floppy. Uh, we've got floppy cable going from between the floppy and the uh, single board computer. And then I made uh, a little harness here so I could hook up uh, the serial port. So you only need three wires on the serial port, uh, transmit, receive, and ground. So I've wired those up from the serial port header over to the uh, to DB9 jack. Um, you could probably use an old ribbon cable and DB9 on an old PC case, but I didn't have any, so I made up the harness myself. Uh, I've got a USB to serial adapter and a null modem adapter between the two. So, a uh, funny story, um, the first time I tried this out, I actually had uh, the CPU rotated 90 degrees in the socket. And uh, it powered up, it got very hot, I burned my finger on it, I burned out one of the ports in my USB hub, uh, Windows was actually complaining about a USB device taking too much power, um, and I looked up and saw other builders and realized that Yes, I had rotated the CPU chip the wrong direction. So be aware that you can uh, put these square chips in uh, rotated and they will happily plug in. Okay, so we're ready to plug it in. Um, do that. The light starts out red. Um, it'll turn green when the thing is uh, booted and running. There, it turned green. Uh, the color on your LED probably depends on which way you plug it into the uh, footprint. Uh, since it is a bicolor LED, you plug it in the other way, maybe it starts out green and then turns red. Um, anyway, we'll bring up a terminal session on my PC and uh, see what this looks like. 
Okay, so I've unplugged the SBC 188 so we can do a fresh boot sequence. I've got a terminal uh, set up under Windows, so let's plug it in. Uh, there's a boot screen. Uh, it's testing its memory, 16 megahertz clock, 512K RAM. Uh, the clock has stopped, so I never installed uh, any kind of battery backup on the clock, so it's not surprising uh, that the clock was reset. Let's go in here. We'll ignore that. Uh, drive A disk type. Got a 1.4 megabyte floppy. No drive B. I don't have any of this trickle charge backup stuff for the clock. Um, no fixed disks. No SD cards. Sure. And then uh, serial port baud rate 9600 baud. Booting from drive A. So it, it's kind of cool. It did all of the bio stuff through uh, serial. So we didn't need an actual display adapter or anything like that. Just a serial connection. And here we are in DOS. It's all of our DOS commands. Um, let's try running something like check disk. Check disk worked. Uh, so let's try something else. A tree. What does that do? It shouldn't tell us much. Yeah, all we have is one subdirectory called check it. Um, because I have check it installed on this floppy. What else is around? Um, I know check it doesn't work. I've tried it before. I think it directly uh, writes the display RAM, perhaps, and uh, I get no output from it over the serial. Let's try something like GW Basic. So GW Basic has has loaded up, but when I've tried to use it before, it hasn't worked right. Let's try it again. Yeah, see, it's just echoing, uh, it's just echoing commands without actually doing anything. Um, maybe I can ask some people on the forum what's up with GW Basic. And foo. Maybe it's not actually registering the return key for some reason. Um, I don't think the function keys are going to do anything. F2, yeah. Um, yes, I need to look into that. I, I don't even think I can exit it because it's not actually um, interpreting these keys. So I'll just hit the reset button. There we go, booting back up. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of limitations in what software you can use. You can only use things, presumably that use the, the BIOS functions for screen reading and writing. Um, and then even at that, some programs may not be compatible. I'm going to switch disks. And switch over to this one, which should have Galactic Warzone installed on it. War. So let's see if Galactic Warzone will load. So Galactic Warzone, of course, was a bulletin board game. It's pretty much a text mode game. Um, we could run Galactic Warzone, so it used the serial port directly, but we are going to run it through the console. So it is going through the BIOS um, I.O. And it is uh, directly printing stuff on the screen, which is getting sent out the serial. So this is uh, this is really slow. I wonder uh, why it's so slow. Maybe it's causing uh, multiple ANSI sequences to move to each one of these character positions or something like that. Um, or who knows, maybe back in the day I wrote it this way because I thought slowly printing graphics were cool. I have no idea.
been a long time. Something a little bit. Uh... Yeah, so that's probably some high ASCII characters it printed. Uh, maybe we need to set an emulation setting in the terminal program. Something like that. Uh, the disk I.O., uh, really slow. Um, Galactic War Zone. I probably wrote it back when I had a hard drive. Probably uh, didn't expect anyone to be running it off of a floppy. So the SBC-188 does have a couple hard drive options. Um, if you get something called the, the parallel port prop board, I think you can hook it up to this, and then you'd have a propeller, uh, which would emulate um, SD card storage, perhaps. Uh, there's also a parallel port IDE board, which would give you a couple IDE ports. Um, all that would be interesting to try out, because um, obviously working off of a 3.5-inch floppy is... Uh, kind of slow and tedious by today's standards. Um, we're just loading data off the disk. Okay, here we go. Play game, read instructions, or exit. Yeah, you can see kind of the cursor uh, bouncing around down there in the screen coordinates. Um, I think that's because it's running over and it's updating that clock in the lower uh, right-hand side. Um, bouncing between updating the clock and back here at the prompt. So let's play the game. Oh, yeah, please register your software. Always good to register. Okay, so we could dock at the port. Um, so I had no empty uh, cargo hold, so we're we're full up on equipment. Let's just uh, autopilot back to sector one. It is periodically ask um, it is periodically accessing the disk. So um, Galactic War Zone must. Uh, Periodically read the sector file or the port file or something as it's moving around. Um, so here we are in sector one. Should be able to buy stuff. There we go. So yeah, see, I've got some credits. I could buy some more cargo holds if I wanted to. Uh, so maybe let's uh, let's buy some more cargo holds. Let's buy twenty of them. Uh, so that's as far as I'm going to take this little demo. So I have loaded a non-trivial program, Galactic War Zone. It's text-based program, so it's appropriate to running on. Uh, something that's sending its text out a serial connection. Um, it seems to, even though the software was written for a hard drive and a more modern CPU, probably, uh, it's working reasonably well on this SBC-188. Uh, so I'm impressed. I think as long as you you pick the right software, you know, you stick with programs that, that do work in text mode, um, I think this SBC-188, you could do quite a bit with it. I'm going to try... Uh, maybe in the future adding uh, the parallel port IDE or something and uh, see where I can take it with, with a hard drive type device. Uh, that's it.
Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.